Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an Acer Aspire V11 Touch. It's a touchscreen notebook with an 11.6 inch display, sells for about $369 or less. This is actually the most expensive version in the series, which has an Intel Pentium Bay Trail quad core processor, it's an N3530 CPU, and uh, 4 gigs of RAM and 500 gigs of storage. Uh, at 369 being the most expensive model is still a relative term, but there are cheaper versions with non-touchscreen displays for less, uh, or 2 gigs of RAM, or 320 uh, gigs of storage. So uh, the cheapest model is the E11 with a dual-core Celeron processor, and that sells for 250 goes up to this model, uh, which Acer loaned me to review. And it's a pretty nice little laptop with, uh, like I said, a Bay Trail processor, which is similar in architecture to the Atom chips that you might find in low-cost tablets or notebooks, uh, but it offers a combination of long battery life and decent general-purpose performance. Uh, once upon a time, an Intel Atom chip was a sign that you had a low-power device that was going to be relatively inexpensive and probably a good secondary device, something that you might use when you're on the go but that you wouldn't necessarily want to take uh, use as your primary laptop. But, uh, but this machine, you know, depending on your needs, really could be the only laptop or the only computer that you need in the house. Um, it's not going to be a high-end gaming machine, it doesn't have a high-resolution display, but it can get most tasks done reasonably well. And on top of all of that, it's a fanless system. That Bay Trail processor is a 7.5 watt uh, CPU, doesn't use a lot of power. So let's take a look at the case for this little machine. Uh, weighs about 3.1 pounds, measures about 0.85 inches thick at the thickest point. It's got an SD card slot, USB 2.0, and a headset jack. On the back, there's room for full-size ports, including a gigabit Ethernet, USB 2.0, USB 3.0, for a total of three USB ports, only one of which is uh, high-speed USB 3.0, HDMI, power, and a Kensington lock adapter port. So, um, again, fanless system, no vents. These little guys on the bottom are speakers. Uh, as I mentioned, it gets uh, decent battery life, up to about seven hours of battery life. Um, maybe five if you're doing really CPU intensive tasks, but uh, six to seven is uh, pretty reasonable for doing work on the go. So Wi-Fi on, screen brightness set to 50, 60%, and a lot of web surfing, editing documents, and so forth. Uh, that's kind of what I spend a lot of time doing as a blogger, and uh, I've taken it to coffee shops or other places and gotten pretty good battery life. Um, if you need more power, you're going to have to carry this power brick around with you. Uh, the battery isn't easily swappable. Uh, it's relatively small for a power brick, but it's not exactly a uh, cell phone charger style uh, system. Uh, as I mentioned, battery built in, you can't just pop it out. But you can take 13 screws off the bottom of the laptop here, and I've got another video showing how to do that, and get at the battery. Not really meant to be user replaceable, but perhaps you could swap it out. Uh, some of the cheaper models in the series might actually have lower uh, capacity batteries, so they're not going to get quite the same battery life as this version. Uh, if you do take off the, the uh, panel here, though, you'll also be able to pull out the slim 2.5-inch hard drive and replace it with a faster solid-state drive if you wanted to. And you could take out the entire uh, motherboard if you wanted to and get at the memory and upgrade from 4 gigabytes to, uh, to more RAM if you needed to. That's a little bit trickier to do. You have to remove a couple of uh, connectors for the touchscreen and the keyboard and so forth to get at it. Uh, so really, if you have a choice between getting a model with 2 gigs of RAM and 4 gigs, you might want to opt for 4. If you need more than 4, you're going to need to do a little bit of surgery. So open it up, and as I mentioned, it has a hard drive instead of a solid state drive, so we're going to turn it on, and you'll see that while Windows 8 generally boots pretty quickly, even on systems with relatively slow processors, uh, it's not quite as fast as some of those systems out there when it comes to loading. So, better than the Windows 7 or earlier system, but not immediate here. It's got a touchscreen display, and it has what almost looks like two separate screen bezels. I think you can actually see it better from this side on the camera. So there's a black plastic uh, bezel here around the edge, and then inside there's a black area surrounding the visible uh, part of the screen. And that allows you to do things like, um, let's go ahead and launch an application. You can swipe down from the top and use edge gestures like that. So um, you do sort of need that, uh, some sort of bezel. It's a little bit weird that it almost looks like it has two bezels. I don't know why it's taking so long to load the weather. Here we go. Um, it's a little bit weird that it looks like it has two bezels. And the non-touch versions of this uh, 
don't have that sort of two separate system. They just sort of have one thicker black plastic bezel around the screen. So, as we mentioned, this has a touchscreen display, uh, reasonably responsive. You can poke the screen, it wobbles a tiny bit, but not so much as to, uh, to be particularly distracting. And while I was initially uh, skeptical of the idea of uh, laptops with touchscreen displays that didn't have sort of a tablet functionality, I find that it's actually pretty handy. So when you're typing, you can sort of reach up to the screen and it's almost as natural an experience as reaching down to the touchpad. If you're using a mouse off to the side, you might find it a little bit awkward uh, to reach up to the screen at that point, but uh, being able to actually touch the part of the screen that you're uh, looking for it instead of having to move a mouse cursor around and then click and drag, uh, I find it can actually be pretty useful. So even applications that weren't initially designed for touchscreen displays seem to work pretty well here. And the, the hardest part is that some of these little menu items can be a little bit uh, small. But let's go ahead and load up a video here. This is running in 720p. The laptop has a 1366 by 768 pixel display. So uh, 720p videos you know, work pretty, pretty well on them. Uh, should be able to handle full HD videos, but there's not really a lot of reason to, to play them unless you're plugging in an external monitor. Viewing angles are, are pretty good. You can see there's a little bit of glare. This is a glossy screen but you can tilt from side to side and still see the video. And it's got built-in speakers on the bottom. It's no surprise that when you are doing screen mirroring, you sometimes run into errors. Uh, loud enough, clear enough for sort of one person sitting in front of the laptop. If you wanted to uh, blast music to a party, you're gonna want some external speakers, but, uh, or if you wanna you know, blast music to yourself, some headphones. But the speakers will do in a pinch when you're watching videos or doing other sorts of things. Uh, in terms of general performance, uh, like I said, up to five to seven hours of battery life, but at the same time, multitasking works pretty well. We've got this video playing at the same time. Um, you know, we have no problems surfing the web, opening uh, tasks. I could probably play some music in the background at the same time. Um, you know, it's got that quad core processor, so multitasking works pretty well. And I've, uh, you know, spent a lot of time over the last week or two that I've been reviewing this laptop um, with a dozen or more browser tabs open while listening to music and editing photos. And, uh, and it works pretty well under those conditions. So, um, you know, it, it, it's not as fast as, say, a machine with a Haswell processor. So when I ran uh, video transcoding tests or uh, folder zip tests or other things like that, uh, it doesn't do quite as well, but it does a lot better than systems that might have had Intel Atom processors in uh, previous generations of uh, Intel's technology. Um, so it's a Pentium processor. It uh, kind of earns the Pentium name, although even Atom processors in the Baytrail line, I find, are reasonably good. Um, this guy is faster than any Baytrail Atom-based system that I've uh, tried so far. And um, if you don't need a high resolution screen, you don't need premium features like a backlit keyboard, um, then you know I think it's, it's definitely worth considering as a primary laptop. Um, as I mentioned, the keyboard, it's a full-size QWERTY keyboard. There's a little bit of flex in the middle, um, but you know, it's sort of par for the course with inexpensive laptops. Nice large touchpad that uh, supports multi-touch gestures and, uh, and works pretty well. I'm not a huge fan of the way that uh, Acer tends to cram six keys into the uh, lower right corner here where you normally might have room for three keys. So that's your home end, arrow keys, page up, page down, volume, and screen brightness uh, adjustments. It's, uh, it can be a little bit difficult, I think, to find some of those keys without looking down at your fingers. But the more you, time you spend with the laptop, the more you'll probably get used to that arrangement. So. Overall, I am uh, pretty impressed with what you get for under $400 here. Uh, it's not the best laptop money you can buy necessarily, it's not the fastest. That hard drive is going to make certain tasks like booting a little bit slower or uh, uh, anything that writes to the storage a lot, like folder zip, uh, is going to be a little bit slower than with an SSD. But you can upgrade to an SSD if you want to. Um, and again, if you have basic task needs of a computer, it's uh, pretty impressive what you can get for under $400 here, especially in a system that is fanless. Um, so it gets long battery life and it runs almost silently. The only thing that could possibly make noise on the inside really is that hard drive, which again, you can replace if you really wanted to. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a video review of the Acer Aspire V11 Touch. You can find more details at lilliputing.com.